A group of Palestinians uh, are choosing nonviolent protests in dealing with the Israeli government. There was um, a mosque security standoff. Basically, what happened there is a, a mosque in um, uh, near a, a major Jerusalem shrine, and um, the um, Israel has put up big uh, security checkpoints, and I believe two Israeli soldiers were um, gunned down. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, two Israeli police officers standing guard outside um, a referred plateau that the Jews call the Temple of Mount, um, and Muslims refer to as the Noble Sanctuary, when three Israeli um, Arab gunmen. Um, killed two Israeli police officers standing guard. This was on July 14th, so they've started to do metal detectors and put more security in there. Obviously, this is, you know, uh, nothing new, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And what uh, a new group has been doing, um, uh, the moderate, it's a Palestinian National Initiative Party, and um, the leader is uh, Mustafa Barghouti, and he talked about the beauty of nonviolence. And I've talked about this before when I was on that uh, the Aggressive Progressives with Jimmy Dore and Malcolm Fleshner. You know, we interviewed those two guys in the cave. <clears throat> one of them was Palestinian. One of them was a uh, a Canadian uh, Jew, and they were talking about peaceful resistance and nonviolence. What has always been a problem, you know with the Palestinian conflict is they respond with violence and, and so it undermines any of the stuff that the Israeli government has or is doing when you respond with violence it undermines it because and we see this all over the place we see this in America um, you know like those guys that gun down cops um, here and it's it's understandable in terms of, I don't condone it, but I understand like, so unarmed black men keep getting gunned down by the police and the cops keep getting acquitted. So somebody got mad. In both cases, it sounded like a ex-military with maybe PTSD. Um, anyway, my point is, and I talk about this a lot and Hedges talks about it, it's, it's peaceful nonviolent protest is the solution because what this article goes into is they were doing this, the Israeli soldiers were sort of trying to provoke them a little bit because that justifies it. I mean, this is even just, um, I, I know this is from myself, you know, having, you know, as a kid, I had, I had a, a temper. Everyone in my family had some anger issues. Um, so I was the youngest, so I took the most heat for it, but then that's been something I've had to deal with throughout my life. And then some people would try to say and do and provoke things so that, that I explode. And then, oh, Graham's the hothead, Graham's the asshole. There's just a little personal note. It's like if you poke someone and they poke and poke and poke and poke, and then they respond, you know, whatever, they push or hit you or whatever, then it's like, oh, you hit me, you're crazy. Um, so, but everyone is responsible for their own actions. Um, let me go into the details of what happened and to show you how this can work. Um, this was uh, the recent confrontation over Israeli security checkpoints at a Muslim holy site in East Jerusalem came to a resolution following a largely peaceful protest by thousands of Palestinians and that outcome has not been lost to them. It was, quote, the beauty of nonviolence, proclaimed Mustafa Barghouli, leader of the moderate Palestinian National Initiative Party. The Israelis wanted to provoke us. They wanted to create a clash, but now they know we are nonviolent, we are organized, and we are keeping the initiative in our hands, not their hands. That's part of it, too. It might seem like if you're angry, I, oh, I'm weak, I'm being, I'm not, I, I want to I wanna do something, I want to fight, I'm pissed off. And I understand all of those emotions with whatever subject you're talking about. I mean, whatever. The issues here, you know, the government, the police, the environment, whatever, I understand that. 
But then the minute, especially when you do this with a police force or the military, the minute you respond with force, then they respond with force and they typically usually have more weapons and more force, then they have control. If you sit there and peacefully protest and they're trying to provoke and provoke and, they, and you don't do anything, you are keeping control. It's not easy to do, but it, it, it makes a point uh, here. This is in USA Today, so you know we got a little mainstream media flavoring throughout this. So it says, the daily protests were not free of violence. In fact, several hundred Palestinians regularly threw rocks and Molotov cocktails at Israeli security personnel. But they were a minority compared to thousands of Palestinians who protested against the metal detectors that the Israeli uh, installed around the I Aska Mosque through peaceful prayers in the streets. Um, this is this is this is what happened. So there was a shooting of the police officer. So then the Israeli government instituted um, metal detectors, right? Uh, an infrastructure for security cameras at each entrance to the uh, esplanade. Although many Israelis considered the security devices unobtrusive, Palestinians objected to them as encroachment in an area they consider their sovereign territory. That's part of the problem too. It's like, oh, we're giving you this territory, but we're going to police it and we're going to do whatever we want. So in the past, the Palestinians have always responded with force and terrorism and violence and so it then Israel is always justified to say look I know this as a guy that's again I'm an American but I, I'm Irish I you know I have Irish blood in me and you know it was always talked about uh, the northern northern Irish and the IRA now I don't know the current and, and I know some of you are in Ireland and you're you're more well versed on this than I am but in a general sense it was part of it too, is the IRA responded with violence a lot of times in the 70s and 80s and stuff. And the IRA even trained the PLO. And so it just gave the English government more justification to treat the Irish that way and to treat the IRA that way. And this is in anything. If you're arguing with a spouse or your neighbor or a coworker to your local police on up the line, this is the best way to do it is peaceful nonviolence because if, and especially, especially if someone's like wanting to get into it, especially then, you know, you are, you are keeping control of the situation. Even if they push you or provoke you or slap you or whatever, and you just sit there and take it, it's not easy to do. Um, but here's what happened um, here in Palestine. So um, during the course of the standoff, seven Palestinians were killed in clashes with Israeli police. In addition, three Israeli family members living in the West Bank settlement were slashed to death by a 19-year-old Palestinian who had written Facebook posts threatening violence in reaction to steps Israeli took at the al Asqua. By the 12th day, Israel withdrew its electric security devices rather than face a second Friday of massive resistance. On Friday, July 28th, the peace held and prayers took place in the mosque. These two weeks have been incredible, said bookshop owner Mahmoud Muna. Some of the Muslims going to pray are there for the first time, not because they found religion, but because they found a cause. The Israeli newspaper Haaretz described the euphoria that swept East Jerusalem since the successful battle against the metal detectors positioned at the Temple Mount and entrances. Um, Anwar Ben Badiz, a professor at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, said the protest proved to be an excellent example of how to lead a civilian struggle, um, Israel, which is what we're talking about. Israeli authorities take exception to descriptions of nonviolent demonstrations. Um, Police spokesman noted that most of the prayers in the street protest, several hundred Palestinians threw rocks, explosive bottles, um, and they responded with war can water cannons, stun grenades. Um, so yes, there was some, um, obviously there's some violence, but hopefully the majority of the people doing a peaceful protest, the, the people, I'm assuming they're young males, throwing rocks and whatever else will so will go oh they're actually it's more effective sitting there peacefully protesting because in a peaceful protest then maybe we can come to some sort of thing maybe Israel and Palestine can come together 
maybe I'm being naive, <laughs> but I don't think I am. People a lot smarter than me have done this. Gandhi did it, Dr. King did it, and you could say, oh, nothing is, you know, there's still plenty of racism and problems or whatever, yeah, but big strides have been made and through peaceful protest. I think it's the answer. I think in there is the solution. There's, I mean, part of me is like, I want to resist. I want to boom. I want to black block. I want to start knocking Nazis out and all this stuff. And there's a part of me that feels that way. But when I see stuff like this in Palestine, in the, in the West Bank, like this is, this is intense and this is powerful. And I hope this permeates because I would love to see Israel and Palestine come together and figure it out. They have a lot more in common than they think. Palestinians and Israelis have more in common with each other than they do with me. I'm an American. What do I know about either one of them? About either one of their religions or cultures, you know? <laughs> so thanks for watching the show, you guys. Uh, the, all the Patreon cards are being charged. Once all the, it takes a couple days once the cards are charged and the, the funds go through. Once that clears, because I got to make sure everyone's card clears, then I update the rewards, put your name in the credits, whatever reward tier you did. And also you can start sending me articles if you're at the $5 and up level. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the show.